Brutus, Judas Iscariot, Benedict Arnold. I mean, these are the best known traitors of history. One stabbed Caesar in the back, another sold the son of God to his death for just three months wages, and then one defected from the freedom fighting Americans to the evil British overlords. These are the well known traitors of history. But what's often forgotten is the tragedy that fell upon each of these men after their betrayal. I mean, Brutus and Judas both took their own lives, and Benedict Arnold turned on the Americans to join the losing side, and then he had to flee from Canada to England after the war because he was so deeply unpopular. And today we meet a new traitor of history who suffered the same fate as the Big Three. He's not the focus of this video, but remember his name, Henry Phillips. Now, unless you've read a book on Tyndale, and if you have, I mean, why are you watching this video? But unless you're well versed in today's topic, you would never have heard of Henry Phillips. But now that you have, get ready for your blood to boil. Hello there. Okay, so not heaps is known about Tyndale's early life. Most accounts have him born in 1494, but he could have been born as early as 1486. And so by the 1510s, Tyndale was in his 20s, and he went to Oxford to study theology, and he trained to be a minister. However, as Tyndale noted later in life, this training involved almost no study of the Bible at all. He learned about the history of the church and the teachings from church councils, but if we're to take Tyndale's words, they almost never looked at the Bible when he studied. Now, if you've watched earlier episodes, this will come as no great surprise. For the medieval church, they believed that because the church wrote the Bible, the Bible was just one of many ways of knowing about God. For the medieval church, the Pope's writings and church councils were also ways of knowing about God, and these were seen as being on par with the Bible. So you had the Bible, the Pope's writings, and church councils all as equal ways of knowing about God. However, in Tyndale's latter years of study, Martin Luther had kicked off the Reformation, and you can catch up here, and many across Europe were captivated by the idea that the Bible was the only way of knowing about God. And Tyndale was one of those who was taken by the message. For Tyndale, the church didn't write the Bible. But God used people in the church like Paul and Peter to write the Bible. And so because God wrote the Bible and the church didn't, the Bible took priority over anything else that the church later said. But nonetheless, by 1521, Tyndale had graduated his studies and he went off to work for a knight called Sir John Walsh in Gloucestershire. And basically Tyndale had the job of teaching Walsh's children about Christianity. However, Tyndale was a very naughty boy and he openly taught that the Pope could be wrong and that the Bible was the only thing that was guaranteed word of God. Obviously this annoyed the Catholic priests who also taught in Gloucestershire, and Tyndale became resented by the other priests. And in 1523, Tyndale went down to London to approach a bishop called Cuthbert Turnstall, and he asked Turnstall if he would help him write an English translation of the Bible. Now Turnstall said no. As with the third Luther episode, the Catholic Church forbade ordinary people from translating the Bible because they feared that if everyone could read the Bible, then everyone would have their own interpretation and the church would split into a thousand different strands. Which they were right about, I might add. Nonetheless, this meant that no one really knew what the Bible said because A, they couldn't read, or B, the few commoners who could read, couldn't read it in their own language. And so because most people couldn't fact check the church, the church could basically teach what it wanted. With no success in England, Tyndale travelled to Germany to Luther's hometown of Wittenberg, and he met a man by the name of William Roy there, and together they translated the New Testament into English. And in 1526, they found a printer by the name of Peter Schoffer, who agreed to print off this English version of the New Testament. And fortunately for Tyndale and Roy, they found some willing smugglers who managed to sneak the English copies out of the Holy Roman Empire, and then back into England and also Scotland too. And these English copies were in hot demand. For the first time, ordinary English people could read what their holy text actually said. Now, given this was illegal and clearly an act of defiance against the Catholic Church, which England was still a part of in the 1520s, the English authorities cracked down hard. Turnstall would publicly burn the books to try and scare people away from reading it, but when a book becomes forbidden, it just makes people really want to read it. In 1529, Tyndale was declared a heretic by the English and Tyndale moved to a new German city called Hamburg to work on translating the Old Testament too. Now Tyndale was officially a heretic, but he really didn't help himself a year later. In 1530, King Henry VIII was planning on divorcing his wife to remarry someone else, and we'll cover that properly next episode, but Tyndale went public and wrote that if Henry got the divorce, it'd be unbiblical. Henry was furious with Tyndale and demanded that Emperor Charles V send him back from the Holy Roman Empire to England so that Tyndale could be dealt with. Charles however said that they needed to see proof that he was a heretic first. 
And so Tyndale knew he was on borrowed time. He fled to yet another city called Antwerp and went into hiding. Now he stayed in the house of a merchant called Thomas Points, and while in Antwerp, Tyndale kept producing revised editions of his Bible, and his smugglers kept them flowing into England. Being unable to scare the public away from buying these Tyndale Bibles, the English authorities started to buy them up themselves just to try and keep them off the market. This led to a bizarre situation where Tyndale would print a Bible knowing that it would be bought just to be burnt, but he then used that money to print even more Bibles. Now some argue that it's a shady move to profit from Bibles being burned, but I personally think it was a genius move because it allowed him to flood England with more of his Bibles and it gave him the resources he needed. And none of his dealers would actually give him up as well. Once again, the authorities had failed to stop Tyndale, so they came to the conclusion that the problem had to be stopped at the source and Tyndale had to be killed. So enter Henry Phillips. Now Henry Phillips was the son of an English parliamentarian and so he was very rich, but young Henry gambled away all of his money. And so on the run, Phillips fled to Antwerp of all places and he came into contact with Tyndale as he met Thomas Points. Now Points was pretty skeptical about Phillips and he felt that he wasn't a very trustworthy guy. On the other hand, Tyndale thought Phillips was an ordinary guy who was also a fan of Martin Luther and because of his like of Luther, he thought that Phillips could be trusted to keep Tyndale's secret that he was hiding in Antwerp. Now, unfortunately for Tyndale, his instincts were wrong on this one, and having been promised money from English authorities to get out of bankruptcy, Phillips actually pointed out to Emperor Charles V where Tyndale was hiding. Traitor. Now, while Charles and Henry were enemies at this point, they both strongly disliked Lutherans, and so Henry knew that if Tyndale was arrested by the Holy Roman Empire, he'd be killed for heresy and the Bibles would stop coming into England. And so upon Phillips revealing his secret, Tyndale was arrested and placed in a German dungeon. Now Points desperately tried to save Tyndale and pleaded with all the authorities to let him go, but as soon as he was arrested, Tyndale's days were numbered. In October 1536, Tyndale was let out to be executed and he prayed, Lord open the King of England's eyes, before being hung and then having his body burned. Tyndale was dead, but his legacy certainly was not. By 1540, English translations of the Bible were being ordered by Henry VIII, and have a guess whose Bible the translators checked to make sure they were translating it correctly. That's right, William Tyndale's Bible. Now as for Phillips, and just like our other traders, he didn't exactly live in prosperity afterwards either. He lived across Europe on the run from the English government for other matters, and he wrote letters home begging for more money, and by 1542, he actually vanished from the historical record, and his post-1542 whereabouts are still unknown today. Tyndale's legacy far outlived the life of Henry Phillips. Thanks for watching. Make sure to stay tuned next week where we actually focus on Henry's divorce and how the Church of England came to be. And please like, subscribe and comment to help this video gain traction. And I'll see you next time for our next venture into a fascinating part of history.